Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about our last data structure in this uh, course, which is the uh, binary search tree and trees in general, which are a really important concept in computing and computer science. And you'll see them uh, again in future courses. So when we're talking about a tree, uh, we have to start by talking about graphs, as in graph theory. Maybe you've heard about graph theory, at least in the context of mathematics. And when we're talking about graphs, we're not talking about those uh, simple things where you've got you know, a chart with some lines on it. Instead, graphs, uh, at least in mathematics, are a set of objects in which some pairs of the objects are related. Okay, so um, I've got a picture of a graph here, or graphic of a graph up here. And graphs are, consists of vertices, uh, which are kind of the nodes here in this graph. And the vertices are connected by edges, right? Um, so graphs, and, and that's it, it's the intuition. Graphs show up everywhere in computing. Um, you can probably guess that this has a lot to do with networking, right? With maps, things like that. And that's in fact where graphing got its, or graph theory got its start. Um, way back in the 1700s, Leonard Euler, one of the most famous mathematicians, he gave us the little e, the natural logarithm. Uh, he lived in a place called Königsberg, and he liked to take walks uh, to kind of clear his head. And Königsberg had seven bridges in it. There's a little island in the center uh, of this river, and he posed the question to himself, you know, I wonder, is there a way that I can cross all seven of these bridges exactly one time, so without going across one another. And what he realized was, you know, maybe I can formulate this as a mathematical problem. And so he sort of abstracted the problem into this problem of graphs. Okay, so what the way he thought of it was, well, there's actually four land masses here, the north, the island in the middle, the south, and then there's another kind of island off to the right here. And he drew, you know, so he translated these into four nodes, and then they were connected by the bridges, right? And he said, well, you know, he said about coming up with this what became the foundation for modern graph theory of reasoning about problems like this. And so I ask you the same question he posed himself. Can you find, can you get uh, across each connection here with only visiting each connection one time? In other words, can you only traverse each edge one time? And the answer is no. All right, so try that out. Um, so this is a graph, right? Now trees come from this idea of graph theory. A tree is a special type of graph that is an acyclic connected graph. So what in the world does that mean? Well, connected means that you can get to any node from any other node. In other words, there's no, there's no little island of nodes down here, right? There's a path between every node. Uh, you, have, you may have to go through multiple nodes, but that's fine. It's just that you can get from A to H and B to A. You can get to every one of these nodes from every other node. That's what connected means. Acyclic means there's a every node is connected, or any two nodes are connected by exactly one path. Okay, so C is kind of the nexus of this tree here, of this graph, um, and all almost all paths go through C. But there's no like triangles in here or squares. You have to, there's only one way to get between any pair of nodes. That's what a tree is, okay? So you're familiar with trees, uh, both outdoors, hopefully, and in science, right? Here's a tree for um, animal classification, plant and animal classification, the taxonomy. Um, file systems are organized according to trees. You have the root of the file system, and then it descends into different things. So this is a Linux file system or even a Mac file system. Uh, Windows, the root is C colon backslash, right? But there are trees in a com file, uh, file systems in computers follow trees, right? 
So trees show up everywhere in computer science, including in this class, including in data structures. So we are going to implement a tree data structure, and it's going to be very useful for us. Um, the reason is, so first of all, trees are going to be a nonlinear data structure. They're different from, say, an array-based list where everything is kind of packed in together, or even a linked list where everything is, you know, there's previous, there's next, there's things packed in. It's a little bit more like a hash table in a way. We're going to implement it differently. But, you know, things just kind of go here and there. They're not always clumped in right next to one another. Um, but the idea behind trees, the thing that makes them so useful, is the same thing that makes merge sort and quick sort and binary search useful, which is if we divide up the work intelligently, we can use divide and conquer algorithms that maybe are better than big O of N. Okay? So before we get into the code and the data structure, and I know a lot of you just want to get into the code, we're going to be really well served if we have a good conceptual understanding of trees. Okay, so first things first, uh, let's turn to the tree handout that you have, and let's make sure that we understand the terminology that's going to be used. Okay, so every tree has a root. Uh, let me get my pen up here, right? So every tree has a root. Uh, the tr root of this tree is A, right? You know, tree A is the root. Oh yeah, look at those awesome uh, mouse drawings, uh, mouse letters. A is the root of the tree, meaning that everyone comes out, everyone is connected to the root in some way, right? The root is the base of the tree. Uh, trees also have leaves, okay? Um, actually, we'll define the leaf in a second. Every, well, not every, Many nodes in the tree are going to have children, okay? So the children of A are its descendants. So uh, C is a descendant, B is a descendant, and I is a descendant or a child, excuse me, I should use the word child. C, B, and I are ch children of the root A, okay? C also has children who are C's children. Well, that's J and F. Right? B has three children, D, G, and E. Now, I'm not including grandchildren here when I talk about children. Um, the, so, uh, A's children are C, B, and I. And furthermore, A is the parent of C, B, and I. Okay? Um, collectively, uh, though, let's say that we're looking at everybody down here. Okay. We can say that everybody down here are descendants of A. Okay. Everybody down here is a descendant of A. Who's the descendants of C? Well, the descendants of C are this group here. Okay. So uh, descendants all have a common ancestor. In this case, it's C. Um, we can also say that C is the ancestor of F, J, and H. Okay, so clearly the metaphor here is the family tree. So if you understand the concept of a family tree, you will also understand, you know, most of the these terms over here, right? Um, who are H's ancestors? Okay, look at this for a minute and think. Who are H's ancestors? Well, H's ancestors is everybody who is connected to a, between H and the root of the tree. Okay, so H to F to C to A. Right? H's ancestors are F, C, and A. Right? All right. Who are the siblings of C? Well, what is a sibling in real life? A sibling is someone or people with common parents. Right, so C's siblings are B and I. Right? These people, D, G, E, M, and M, M, these are not siblings of C. Okay, C's siblings are his, you know, just like you. Your cousins are not your siblings. Your siblings are only your brothers and sisters if you have them. Okay, so that's the concepts here. Um, some more tree specific concepts. Let me erase what's on the slide here for a second. 
Okay, so some more tree-specific terminology. Path, okay? A path between two nodes is, you know, the list of edges that connect those nodes. So let's say we want a path from H to E, okay? This is a tree, so there's only one path from H to E. That path is H to F, F to C, C to A, A to B, B to E. Okay, that's a path. There's going to be only one path for each pair of nodes. You just need to know that term, path. All right, the depth. What is the depth of a node? The depth of a node is the length of the path from that node to the root. So remember, the root is A up here. Okay, so what is the depth of, let's say, I? Well, the depth of I is the length of this path. So what's the length? It's just a count. How many edges are between myself and the root? Well, in the case of I, its depth is 1. Okay. Uh, how about P? What's the depth of P? Well, we got to count the edges between P and the root. So there are 1, 2, 3 edges between P and the root. So the depth of P is 3. What's the depth of the root? Okay, the depth of the root, well, there are no edges between the root and itself, so the depth of the root is 0. Okay, so nodes have depth. The tree has a height. Okay, the height of the tree is the maximum depth among all the nodes in the tree. So have a look at this tree. What is its height? The height is the maximum depth. Well, um, I believe, you know, just kind of looking very quickly, we can see here that the height of this tree is going to be 3, right? That's the maximum depth of any of these nodes. So the height of this tree is 3, all right? So a path, know, the know all these terms that are on this slide. If you have any questions, let me know. Check out your book. All right. So... Let's move into thinking about a data structure. Uh, first, a binary tree. So a binary tree is a tree in which each node has at most two children, right? So this guy over here is a binary tree. If you go back and look at the previous one, this is not a binary tree because some of these nodes, A node, uh, the B node, they have more than two children. A binary tree is just a tree where each node has, at most, two children. You can have one child, like F, and a node can have no ch children, like H. By the way, I think I forgot to define this, didn't I? Yes. Nodes that have no children are leaf nodes. Okay, Leafs are going to be very important for us when we go to use this thing in code. All right. Uh, binary trees can solve a variety of problems in computer science. And the one that we're going to focus on is what's called a binary search tree. So a binary search tree is a binary search tree with a very important property. Um, here I've got the abbreviations of states. The important property of a binary search tree is that pick any node in this tree. Let's say Georgia. The property of a binary search tree is that the value of the node is greater than all of its left descendants and less than all of its right descendants. Okay, so Georgia, we're sort let's say that the comparison that we use here is alphabetical order. Right? We see that Georgia is greater than a K C T D E, but it's less than H I. Okay. Similarly, let's take a look at C T, a binary search tree. Any node, it's going to be greater than its left descendants, less than its right descendants. C T is greater than A K, but less than D E. Okay. Take a look at the root node. K S is greater than all of these descendants over here but it's less than all of these descendants over here. 
So that's a bind that's what makes a binary search tree a binary search tree. Now we're going to code one of these things and it's going to be up to us the programmer to make sure of this property, right? But the cool thing is if we maintain this property we can do really interesting things. First of all, these contents are sorted, right? If you kind of look at this just kind of going from left to right, it's sorted. Uh, which is kind of neat, right? We can use that to our advantage. Um, the other thing is when we go to put things in this tree, if we think of it like a tree, we can divide and conquer this problem, just like binary search, merge sort, quick sort. And if the tree is nice and balanced, in other words, if it's not, you know, raggedy, if everything's kind of flat and fluffy here and the tree is kind of filled in, um, our algorithms for inserting, for deleting, and for searching this tree are going to be log uh, base 2 event. All right, so conceptually, this is what we're aiming for. We're going to go code it in a second. So, again, pause for a minute. Make sure you really understand conceptually what this tree is. Okay, a binary tree is a tree in which any node's value is greater than its left descendants. Uh, and less than its right descendants. All right, so we are. Let me get my uh, big head out of the way here for a second. Okay, turn off the webcam. So we are here, right? We have implemented um, all of these different data structures and data types in ADT. So we are going to create a binary search tree data structure that. Um, we will use to implement the map ADT. So you created in assignment number seven a hash map using hash tables. We're going to create a map that works just the same, uh, has the same uh, interface, but using a binary search tree. Okay. So how in the world are we going to implement this thing? Well, we could use a list, an array-based list. Um, we're not going to go there. It could waste a lot of space. It's pretty complex. Instead, what we're going to use is to think of this tree as comprised of a root node that is connected to children. And these children may have their own sub-trees. Okay. So the key word there is node. And what other data structure did we have nodes in? That's right, a linked list. So we're kind of going back to linked list land where we're going to have nodes, but instead of a node.next, we are going to have node.left that kind of contains a connection to the left subtree, and the node.right that contains the reference or the connection to the right subtree. Okay, so we are going to have tree nodes, <laughs> not three nodes, tree nodes, and they're going to look like this. Okay, uh, every node's going to have some data, maybe more than one piece of data, a left child and a right child. And then our goal, whenever we go to put things in the tree, to remove things from the tree, to search through the tree, is we're going to take advantage of these links here, these left and these right children, to kind of go through the tree and do the work we need to do. All right, so that's the introduction to tree and tree concepts. Make sure you're really familiar with all the vocabulary. Make sure you're really comfortable in understanding uh, what it means to be a binary search tree. Now we're going to switch over to the binary search tree uh, worksheet and kind of dig into this concept a little bit more.